Thank you so much for joining me for another Women Crush Wednesday. I am so excited that you're here with me to explore the incredible and amazingly true life of Julie Dobney. Okay, so let's get started. Fact number one, Julie was a 17th century opera singer, fencing master, um, bisexual, as well as occasionally a nun. She was born in 1670 into a life of privilege. Her father, Gaston, was the grand squire of France, which basically meant that he would um, train all of the squires of King Louis XIV. That meant that he would train both the squires, as well as his daughter, in how to ride horses, how to fence, as well as how to drink excessively and how to gamble. All very important things. Fact number two. After Julie mastered as much as she could from her father, she ended up uh, learning sword skills from a man who was both her lover, as well as a uh, murderer who was on the run from the law. She very soon realized that she was actually much better than her teacher and it ended up ditching him in order to enter different um, competitions uh, for sword fighting in which she would earn money. So Julie ended up killing or wounding 10 different men throughout her life in, um, in, in her different duels. In fact, one night she was harassed by three different men on the street. She was just out uh, having a good time and they ended up um, harassing her. She ended up getting into, into a duel with all three men. She beat them so soundly that they all ended up going into the hospital. And the next day, she felt so bad about the fact that she had beat them so soundly that she went to visit one of them who she had stabbed right through the shoulder blade and ended up apologizing to him, and they ended up becoming fast friends for the rest of her life. So Julie was such an incredible swordsman that many men during the, like whenever they were watching her in the audience, wouldn't believe that she was actually a woman. So what she would do would end up revealing that she was indeed a woman halfway through the sword fight and then would continue going on and beating her opponent. So fact number three, I said previously that she was an opera singer and the Paris Opera ended up finding out that she had this incredible talent because she loved to sing humiliating songs about her opponents while she was sword fighting them. As soon as she joined the opera, she soon became one of their fastest rising stars because she had a photographic memory as well as a definite flair for the dramatic. Fact number four, Julie was very openly bisexual and was not at all concerned about pursuing women left and right. She was in fact married, but her husband, Monsieur Montpin, uh, ended up spending a lot of time in the colonies and she had no desire to join him. So she ended up staying in France and was free to pursue uh, anyone that she wanted to court. All of these different dalliances ended up resulting in King Louis XIV having to get her out of very many um, tight, difficult situations. In her late teens, she ended up falling in love with a local merchant's daughter. The merchant found out, was very upset about this, and ended up sending his daughter to a nunnery. Julie did not want to give up this um, relationship, so she ended up following the merchant's daughter to the nunnery, where she also joined as a nun. Very soon after she joined, um, an elderly nun ended up passing away, and Julie had decided that she wanted to burn this nunnery to the ground in order to escape with her lover. So what they ended up doing was taking this elderly nun who had just died, taking her body, putting it into the lover's room, and then they ended up eloping together. People came and, and excavated the ruins. They found a body in the lover's room, and so they thought that this merchant's daughter had died. But, in fact, Julie and this woman had ended up um, running away together and spent three months um, in hiding before they were eventually found. So when she was found, she was actually sentenced to death and had to appeal to the king for clemency, which, of course, he did. She had to appeal to him again later on in her life. She was known for um, hitting on women, specifically in front of their suitors, at various balls. 
In many such situations, she would hit on the women, um, and the suitors what ended up challenging her to a duel, which she was very happy to partake in. It is, many historians think that she actually ended up killing a lot of these suitors. And of course the king, because he was just so entertained by her crazy flamboyant lifestyle, and because of course she was basically a part of the royal family, he ended up giving her pardon again and again. Fact number five. Julie died at the age of 37, and we're not exactly sure how the end of her life played out. Some historians believe that she reunited with her husband and led a very peaceful end for life while performing for the Paris Opera, while others believe that she ended up rejoining a nunnery after the death of one of her, one of her female lovers. So even though we don't exactly know how the end of her life played out, we do know that she led a super incredible life and I have to say, I don't know why there hasn't been a movie made about this yet. Hollywood, if you're listening, please make a movie about this super incredible woman. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for another Women Crush Wednesday to learn all about this super crazy life of Julie Dobney.